Hi, I'm Dima, and I will be talking about our system called Checklist for Private Blockless Lookups. This is joint work with Henry Corrigan Gibbs. In our setting, the server holds a block list of strings, and the client holds a private string it wants to check against the server held block list. And there are several examples of such block lists on the web, for example, certificate revocation lists or databases of breached passwords, and in each of those cases, the client's query string is somewhat private. An additional example of such a block list is the Safe Browsing System. So Google maintains and constantly updates a database of dangerous URLs. These are URLs of websites that are used for phishing or for spreading malware. And whenever a participating browser wants to render uh, any URL, it actually checks whether this URL appears on the Safe Browsing database. And if it does, then the browser prevents the user from visiting the web page and shows the user this kind of warning page. And there are a few more details. So in particular, the browser doesn't just send the URL in the clear to Google. It sends a 32-bit hash of the URL. And the browser also stores some compressed representation of the block list in order to reduce latency and reduce the frequency with which the browser needs to talk to Google. However, there are still occasional queries. And those queries leak to Google information about the user's browsing history. In this work, we address this problem by designing and building Checklist, a system for private block list lookups. Checklist builds on a new type of private information retrieval called offline online private information retrieval, which we introduced in our work last year. The main benefit of offline online private information retrieval is that it allows the server to respond to client queries in time sublinear in the database size, as opposed to linear time as with traditional PIR schemes. In this work, we design a new offline online PIR scheme that further reduces the server computation by more than 100 compared to our previous work. We also design a technique to efficiently support dynamic databases that can admit changes, whereas our previous work only supported static databases. Finally, we combine these new techniques into a system for private block list lookups and evaluate the system in the context of private safe browsing. Let's first look at the requirements of our system. The first requirement is correctness, meaning that an honest client interacting with an honest server should correctly learn whether its query string appears in the block list. The second requirement is that of privacy for the client, meaning that even a malicious server should learn nothing about the client's query string. And finally, we want our system to be efficient in terms of the latency, the communication, the computation on both the server and the client, and the storage requirements for the client. Note that in particular, we do not require privacy for the server, and we treat the contents of the block list as being public. Although in the paper, we also discuss the extension to the case where the server also has some privacy requirement. Our private block list problem is a perfect fit for a cryptographic tool called private information retrieval. In private information retrieval, a set of servers hold a database X that consists of N records, and for now, think of them as just being single bit long. And the client holds an index i from 1 to n and wants to read record number i from the database without the servers learning anything about i. And here, we focus on the two-server setting, meaning that there are two database servers, which we crucially assume to be non-colluding. That is, the security holds against each server on its own. And since the introduction of private information retrieval, there has been a long line of work improving the communication complexity of the best protocols. And today, we have PIR protocols that require communicating on the order of log n bits on a database that consists of n bits. And those protocols use a tool called distributed point functions. However, the downside of modern PIR protocols is that they are very expensive computationally. In particular, there is a lower bound that shows that in PIR, in order for the servers to respond to the client's query, they need to do a linear amount of work. To make PIR more efficient, in our previous work, we introduced a new type of PIR protocols called offline online PIR. Such a protocol begins by the client talking to one of the servers and obtaining a piece of information about the database, which we call the hint. And even though generating this hint, takes the server time, which is still linear in the database size, 
The server only needs to generate this hint once per client, after which the client can issue multiple queries to the server using the same hint. And crucially, the communication of the offline phase, that is the size of the hint, is, ab is sublinear in the database size, and in our protocol is about lambda times square root of n. So this is much more efficient than, say, just downloading the entire database. And lambda here is the security parameter, say, 128. The client can then use this hint to privately read from the database. Once it gets its input, the client uses the hint to generate its queries to the two servers. From the responses of the two servers, the client can recover the value of its record of interest. And crucially, the communication in the online phase, as well as the running time of the two servers, are sublinear in the size of the database. Moreover, that online phase can be repeated an unbounded number of times without having to repeat the offline phase. This means that the relatively large cost of the offline phase can be amortized over multiple reads. One downside of our offline online PIR protocol is that it is relatively costly in terms of client time. The first contribution in the current paper is a faster offline online PIR protocol. Specifically, we improve both the online communication and the online server time by a factor of lambda, the security parameter. This translates to more than 100x savings in practice. The main idea behind this improvement is the observation that the factor lambda in the old protocol was due to its imperfect correctness. Namely, we had to repeat the basic protocol, which could fail lambda times to drive this failure probability to be negligible. In the current work, we managed to build a new protocol that doesn't have any correctness error. This means we don't need to do those lambda repetitions anymore and get this factor lambda savings. Our second contribution is a mechanism to handle database updates in offline online PIR. Our previous protocol only supported static databases, whereas here in the practical block list setting, we need to handle continuous updates to the database. The reason this is even an issue in offline online PIR is because the client holds a hint that depends on the contents of the database. And as the database changes, the client somehow needs to update this hint. The naive way to handle it would be to have the server rerun the offline phase after each change and generate a new hint from scratch for each client. However, this would require a linear amount of server work on each change for each client, and this would be very expensive. Instead, we develop a new approach of incremental preprocessing. The basic idea is that we store the database and the list of changes in a sequence of buckets of exponentially increasing size. Initially, we put changes into small buckets, and eventually small buckets get, get merged and become larger and larger. This way, the smaller buckets get updated relatively frequently. However, generating the hint for the small buckets is cheap. The large buckets, for whom generating the hint is expensive, only get updated very infrequently. And therefore, the average cost of updating the hint is only logarithmic in the size of the database. Our third and final contribution is a system called Checklist for private block list lookups, which we implemented and then modified the Firefox browser to use it for its safe browsing queries. We implement the checklist in Go and C, and our implementation contains both the new offline online PIR scheme and the traditional PIR scheme based on distributed point functions. To make integration with the browser easier, we run the checklist client as a local proxy, and then we only need to modify the browser configuration to point to this local proxy as its safe browsing endpoint. The local proxy converts the request made by the browser into private information retrieval request to the checklist servers. To get the baseline information for our evaluation, we first monitor a week of safe browsing requests and responses as part of a normal user activity. We do this by modifying our local proxy to simply forward all the requests to the real safe browsing service and record the requests and responses. From the recorded trace, we can deduce the parameters such as the frequency of lookups to the safe browsing service, the frequency of updates, and the rate with which the database grows. To evaluate checklist, we then replay this recorded trace and measure the difference performance metrics. 
For example, here we see the amount of server computation time required to serve the requests of a single user over a simulated period of several months. We can see that with offline online PIR, checklist requires less than one-fifth the amount of server computation than that with a traditional DPF-based PIR scheme. On the flip side, using the DPF-based PIR scheme is more efficient for the client. Here, we see the amount of communication and client-side computation required by a single client using checklist over a simulated period of several months. We can see that the DPF-based scheme requires two to three times less communication than the offline online PIR scheme and about 9x less computation on the client side. We summarize our evaluation by comparing three different approaches to private safe browsing on our different performance metrics. We compare those three approaches to the non-private baseline as it's implemented today in safe browsing. The first approach of downloading and storing the full block list at the client has the advantage of requiring very little computation at both the server and the client. Its main downside is that it requires a lot of communication and a lot of storage on the client. The second approach is to use checklist with a traditional DPF-based BIR scheme. The main advantage here is the little communication and little client storage this approach requires. However, the main disadvantage is the high computational cost at the server of traditional PIR. And finally, using checklist with the new offline online PIR scheme is in some sense the middle ground in terms of the server cost, the communication, and the client storage. However, the client computational costs here are larger than in the other approaches. In conclusion, I think that one high-level message is that two-server PIR is a valuable tool in the design of practical privacy-preserving systems. And there are several alternative protocols, each offering a different trade-off between various efficiency metrics. An interesting future direction is to come up with better offline online PIR schemes in the single server setting. In our previous work, we gave one such protocol. However, there is a lot of room for efficiency improvement. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either Henry or me. And for more information, please check out our paper on ePrint or our code on GitHub. Thank you very much.